What's up, everybody? Just wanted to provide a little quick recruiting update and an update on, you know, who's in the portal, who's coming back, who has decided to move on for both Hokies basketball teams. We've seen a lot of turnover on both these rosters over the last week or two, especially after Kenny Brooks took that position with Kentucky. So things are changing up quite a bit here and just wanted to make sure everyone was refreshed on what the team looks like currently and how things might stack up with this roster. So we'll start with the men's team. Right now, we have retained Brandon Recksteiner, Jaden Young, Melijah Poteet, and Patrick Wessler. So those are the four guys coming back. Everyone else that has entered the portal has stayed there so far. We know that Lynn Kidd signed with Miami. We haven't really heard back from any of the other players yet, so they could return. We're not sure. Padula's up in the air as well. He did say he was thinking about returning, but haven't heard anything from him yet. In terms of the recruits, still got Ryan Jones and Tyler Johnson coming in next season so those two guys they're going to be a big help for the Hokies and it's definitely going to be one of those just throw them out there in the ring and I think they're just going to have to find their feet with so much roster turnover I think Ryan Jones and Tyler Johnson could play really well into this team they're really talented as recruits and they might just get thrown in early on so we'll have to see what happens with that. But right now, they're still coming to Tech next year to play under Mike Young. So good stuff from them. And then the Hokies have gained two guys from the portal already. We have brought on Jordan Ivy Curry from UTSA. It's a big ad for Tech. He knows how to score. Ivy Curry is a very talented scorer, six foot three guard. Led the team with 17 points per game. Shot 39% from three. 5.2 rebounds, two assists. It does look like, I think he was hurt early in the season, so he didn't play any games till December. I think it was an injury. Uh, but he's going to be a big add for Tech at the guard position with only Rex Steiner and Jaden Young coming back. And the two recruits playing in the post. Uh, I believe Johnson is a 3-4, and Jones is going to play like a 4-5. So picking up a vet from the NCAA and Ivy Curry, that's going to be a big help for Tech. So that way, Rex Steiner and Jaden Young can continue developing, and they don't have to take on that full starting workload quite yet. And then also added... Ben Burnham from Charleston, six foot seven forward, 37% from three, 12 points per game, four and a half rebounds. Really solid team, Charleston, this year. They were 27 and eight. So I think Burnham is going to be a good add as well. A nice, tall forward wing player to add. He can shoot the three pretty well. And he was one of the leading scorers for Charleston. Also, I think they had three guys around that 12 points per game mark. So good additions for Tech. They'll need to bring on a few more because right now there is only going to be eight players on the rosters. So right now I think they've got about seven slots open for scholarships and they'll be looking to fill those over the next couple of weeks. And then looking at the women's team, got a new head coach. Big news for Tech fans, pulling in Megan Duffy from Marquette. 110 and 46 record all time with the Golden Eagles. She was 64 and 30 as their head coach in the Big East over her five seasons there. They made back to back NCAA tournament appearances over the last two years, so 2023 and 2024. Signed a six-year contract with the Hokies, 
and she seems to be fitting in really well. Arrived earlier this week, made an appearance at the baseball game on Friday, had her opening press conference, and just talked about that she wants to continue the winning culture here, and she thinks they can pull in a really good squad and do some great stuff, continue winning, which is what she has done a whole lot of, over 70% as a head coach at Marquette in the win column. So good stuff from her. I think she's a really good ad for Tech. We've already seen a couple players reaffirm that they're going to be here next year, and that's been a really good thing to see because when you lose a head coach, you really don't know who's staying. So we do have some more info about what's going on in the next season. And then we've also seen two Marquette players enter the portal. So there is potential to snag them. We haven't heard anything on that yet. But two talented players in the portal. Liza Carlin, all Big East first team last year. And Mackenzie Hare. She was an all Big East honorable mention and made the freshman team last year. So two Marquette transfers that Tech could potentially pull in. We'll see what happens with them. But more on Duffy. So with her coming in, she seems to be really embracing Virginia Tech so far. And it looks like the fans are really embracing her as well. She's been very thankful of the Marquette fans and the Golden Eagles followers. And just thanking them for such a great time there. I think she's going to be a good ad for Tech. And she seems to really get it. I think this thanking the fans is one thing where she's kind of playing the game a little bit. A lot of Hokies fans have been really upset with Kenny Brooks lately. And obviously some of that can stem from, you know, just your head coach leaving for a new job. Obviously that does kind of suck when he pulled in such fantastic recruits, did great things with the Hokies women's basketball team. There was just a lot that happened in a short amount of time. You went from, hey, this could be a team that you know goes back to the Final Four, and then in the span of just a couple weeks, Liz Kitley torn ACL. You find out Brooks is interviewing with Kentucky. They lose in the second round. You find out Brooks is gone, and then you, know, you find out Players like Amor are in the portal, Clara Strack in the portal. Just a tough span, and a lot of Tech fans have been upset, not just because of that, but the lack of a thank you. There was no thank you, Hokie Nation. You know, I don't fault him for taking the job at all. It's a great job, and with the resources he's going to have, I think he's going to do some awesome stuff for Kentucky, but a lot of fans in Blacksburg have just been upset that he never said thanks to them. So it's almost like Duffy's been playing that game a little bit, uh, and Hokie Nation has loved it. She's been very adamant about thanking Marquette and you know putting that out there in her press conferences online on Twitter. She's been very adamant about thanking Marquette for her time there, for the success they've had, and just the great experience that it was for her. And it's been interesting to see all of this kind of just unfold in a way. So I think she's doing some great stuff, and Tech is clearly embracing her and embracing her family. She's been all over, had some photo ops with Brent Pry, with Mike Young. I think John Sheff and all of them were at her initial press conference uh, late in the week this week. So just some awesome stuff going on here for Tech. I know Evan Hughes got to interview her on the plane over. Uh, So seems to be doing just fine and She has retained some of the players so far. I'll go ahead and start with who we've lost. So, obviously, two of the biggest losses are Georgia Amor and Clara Strack. 
Both of them are going to Kentucky to follow Brooks. And then we've also lost three recruits. Lexi Blue, Clara Silva, and Amelia Hassett, all three of them will not be coming to Tech anymore. Going to be a really good squad over there for Brooks. Having Strack and Silva down in the post, oh my, that's going to be ridiculous. It's almost going to be like a Kitley Strack down there. Two gigantic post players who can run it down there. They're going to be a terrifying team with Amor at the point and those two down low. So five losses for Tech. They do retain some really, really good pieces for the future here. Carly Wenzel has reaffirmed that she's going to be here 100%. She let us know on social media that she will be back next year, and she's loved her two years here. So she'll be back as a redshirt sophomore. Look for her to be running the point. Really good season for her first on the court at Tech, and I think she's going to take some really big steps this offseason, and she's going to be a problem for other teams next year. She was one of the best recruits in the country for her class. Her defense is top-notch. She's had some trouble scoring, especially earlier this year, just adjusting into college hoops, but she definitely started to find it later in the year, and she's going to be an issue further into the future. It looks as if we're also keeping Matilda Eck and Rose Mishaw, so two veteran presences that are going to make a big difference for the Hokies. You've got Mishaw's power play down low, and then X just sniper shooting out on the wing. They're going to be really important into just bringing everyone else up to speed and kind of being those rocks of performance for Tech because, you know, we've seen what they can do this year. And those three with Wenzel, really good crew. Looks like we're keeping Karis Baker as well, another sharpshooter for Tech. She struggled a little bit come postseason with her shooting, but man, was she hot earlier in the year. I think against Long Island, she dropped like 15 or 18, something like that. She really can shoot the ball, and I look for her to take a big step up next year as well. She played really solid as a freshman. She was always coming in off the bench in big moments, kind of similar to Matilda Eck in a way. Not exactly the same type of player, but both of them, they'd always... Whenever they come out there, they just hit a big three. So that's one thing I'm looking for for Karis Baker next year is continuing to be that igniter and maybe a little bit more consistency from her. But another really good piece for Tech. She could be very good this season as well. It looks like Suffren is going to stay despite entering the portal. It's going to be good for the Hokies as well. As another point guard, she played a good amount this year as a true freshman. So just having one more piece that's been around and knows how to function with this team is always going to be helpful. We did see some really bright spots from her. Looks like she can score the basketball pretty dang well. So keeping Samaya Suffren is, I think, a very valuable piece for Tech as she did some great stuff in limited minutes this year. And then we're keeping Mackenzie Nelson, it appears, who redshirted this year. We haven't seen her on the court as well. But regardless, one more piece for Tech who knows how to function with this team. She practiced with them all season. So, you know, glad to have her back as well. In terms of the recruits... We already talked about the three we lost. We know that we're keeping Maya Hazelton, which is going to be big, a three-star, six-foot-four forward. So we know we're keeping her around for the future. And then I believe as of right now, we still have Kennedy Henry, who will be coming for 2025. So she won't be here next year because she hasn't graduated high school yet, but she hasn't said anything to 
lead us to believe that she won't be coming for 2025, at least as of right now. So for the Hokie women's team, it's going to be Wenzel Eck, Mishaw, Karis Baker, Samaya Suffren, Mackenzie Nelson, and Maya Hazelton so far next season. So seven of them, they're going to need to be hitting the portal pretty hard as well, losing so many of those recruits for next season. So hitting the portal, going to be big for them. Uh, but either way, really good pieces. If we can add a couple, just a couple players who you know, have some experience and are ready to start right off the bat while the freshmen get up to speed. I think that's going to help a lot. And hopefully with the culture and the support for the women's team that we built in Blacksburg, we can pull in some fantastic recruits from the portal to fill out that roster. So we have seen both teams start to rebuild after losing a good portion of the team close to if not half of each of them so you know starting to put back some pieces in there we'll have to see how they can finish the puzzle over the next couple weeks and months but we're starting to get something going so that's always a good sign you know we've still got a couple big recruits that we could pull in like i said earlier liza carlin the all big east first team player if she decides to follow Duffy from Marquette. I think that would be a big ad for us as well. So we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. But for right now, a good start to filling out these rosters. That's all I've got for you today. We'll probably get into some coverage of Hokies baseball coming up soon. They're playing Wake Forest this weekend. They're down right now in game two, fell in game one. Chase Burns on the mound for the Demon Deacons was filthy last night. 15 Ks for him. The Hokies, they got their bats going early. They had a run, I think, in the second inning. Martini hit a pop-up to center and uh, got lost up in the clouds, dropped. He made it all the way to third and then scored on a fast ball. And then Micheletti Jr., with the grand slam. So, you know, Hokies scored five, but Wake scored eight. Fell in that first one. Game two is going on right now. I wasn't able to make it to it, but I will be there tomorrow. So I'll try and keep you guys updated with some content the best I can through Twitter or Instagram while I'm up in the press box. But I'll definitely have some post-game coverage for you. Recap this series a little bit and talk about some more hokey softball as well. So Diamond Sports in full swing, and they are killing it. Both teams in the rankings. Uh, baseball at 11 right now. And I want to say softball's right around that number two in the current poll. So two really good Diamond Sports teams for Tech. There is definitely potential to host a double regional this year and if they really keep things up potentially both hosting a super regional would be amazing so it's going to be a fun spring here in blacksburg and i'm looking forward to covering all of that for you guys so make sure you stay tuned on that but that's all i've got for you today so check out some great games final four going on right now we've got the national championships coming up soon so really fun time in sports masters as well so catch some good sports and we'll be back with some baseball softball coverage coming up soon